Just uh, breezing through hour two here. Heck of a show today coming at you. And uh, every so often we get these amazing authors that grace us here in the uh, Liquid Lunch studios. If I hadn't mentioned you're watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV, the fastest growing cable network in America, now available in 70 million homes. And if it's not on your cable provider, call them up and say, I want my Newsmax. You must get it. But uh, Stefan Arneo joins us now, and uh, he's an award-winning uh, real estate investor, entrepreneur, and author of uh, Hard Times Create Strong Men, Why the World Craves Leadership, and How You Apparently Can... Uh, how you can spot a terrorist? Oh, no, that's oh, yeah. not you. Step up to fill a need. <laughs> How you can step up to fill a need. Thanks for joining us, my thanks, friend. Thanks Appreciate it. Me, John. So uh, it seems like um, your premise is on point with our, with our recent president, with Donald Trump, that there has been a vacuum of, like, really strong leadership. To me, Obama was kind of, like, wishy-washy, and he was always, you know, bowing down to dictators and all this other stuff. Trump came in at what people craving a strong leader at that point, you think? Yeah, well, I, I did a little bit of research when I wrote this book, and I found that history goes in 80-year cycles. It goes 20 years, hard times create strong men. 20 years, strong men create good times. 20 years, uh, good time. times create weak, weak men, and weak men create hard times. So it's an 80-year cycle there. And we're at the end of that, where we're going into hard times, and we want a strong leader. Russia's got Putin right now. Uh, U.S. has Trump, uh, Canada, we're four years behind you guys, so we still have our Obama, which is uh, Trudeau, but we will probably have a hard leader pretty soon, and, and people need that because during a hard time, you need a strong leader. Yeah, I don't think Justin Trudeau has demonstrated himself to be a uh, strong leader, but I want to ask you how this relates to the rise of Bernie Sanders. You know, he's been around for... God, 40 years or something, you know, and he's been praising dictators like Daniel Ortega in Nicaragua and Fidel Castro in, in Cuba for as long as, you know, I've seen tapes going back 30, 40 years on this guy. What is it that people are seeing in Bernie Sanders that's causing this swelling of, his, of the Bernie bros? Well, it's the same cycle. It's, it's the weak men right now. I'm a millennial. So the millennials, we got to ride that, you know, that weakness of the year 2000 to 2020, we're the weak part of the cycle. And a lot of the guys my age, I'm 33, are looking for handouts. They're looking for free stuff, free education, free health care, free everything. And, you know, there's, there's two types of millennials. There's the guys that go out there and they work super hard and they, they become, you know, wealthy and independent. And then there's the ones that just want to vote for Bernie and Bernie will come, Uncle Bernie will come and save the day. There's also two types of millennials, apparently, physically, because you're not going to believe this, but I'm also a millennial. I'm really? 30, I'm 33 years old. Wow. You just look like such a different type of millennial. Than Moisturizer. <laughs> yeah. I'm moisturizing with this. <laughs> oh. uh, these are the corona. These are preventing my coronavirus over here. Yeah. But uh, this, is, this is a heavy-duty book, okay, yep. handling major issues and stuff. How long did it take you to research it and put it together and then get your thoughts together so it's a story people want to read? So I, I came out of the jungle. I was fasting for 18 days, no food, just water. I came out of the jungle, and I came home to my office, and all my employees mutinied, all these young boys. They said, I, I don't like you. You're mean. This isn't my dream. This isn't the work I want to do. And I had to give these young men a six-hour lecture on how to be a man. And after the lecture, I said, I never want to do it. And I s stayed home for 11 days. I banged this book out. And I said, I'm never giving this speech again. Boom, here it is in a book. A lot of it is books I've read over the last 10 years. So like maybe you could say it took 10 years, but it was written in 11 days. Any part of this six hour talking to um, where you had to take out like a two by four or something and give one of them a good whack over the head? Oh, yeah, I want to take them out to the garage and do that. You yeah. know? It, it was pretty bad, man. And, and what I realized with these young men is they didn't have fathers. And their fathers didn't have fathers. And I've got the stats on fatherless homes. And the young women without fathers end up as strippers, prostitutes, raped, pregnant early, leaving school. Like statistically. The, statistically. Average, yeah. Horrible, horrible. Well, you can, I got the stats. What happens to boys? Then don't jail. Happen. Jail. You end up in jail, incarcerated, some sort of problem. And it's all in the book. You can see with a dad, without a dad. And that's where I fight against toxic masculinity. I say lack of masculinity is toxic, not having a dad. You know, you put a dad in a home, it's way better than having no dad. 
Of course it is. I mean, there's another, I mean, most humans are looking for two parental people to guide them. A masculine and a feminine. And, well, and we've got a war on, we've got a war on dads, we've got a war on masculinity. Don't get me in trouble, you know oh, what I mean? I'm, I'm, be, I'm being trained now that I can't say masculine, feminine, no, man, man, woman, you got to say they, neutral. everything's neutral. Here in New York, you don't even have to put your sex on a birth certificate anymore, you can say <laughs> Unknown. <laughs> well, John, I got a, I got a thing. gender neutral bathroom at my office, man. I, you do? I, Is I, that I, mandatory? I up put there a, in, it's, a, uh, it's a woman. Golden it's a woman territory? with a beard. It's a woman oh, really? with a beard. That it says gender neutral. neutral. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I w were you surprised that um, here in America, Joe Biden, Obama's vice president, is running for the presidency? And Obama hasn't bothered to come out and say a word about him, but he took time out of his life to go endorse Justin Trudeau. Wasn't that strange? That's mega strange. I don't get that at all. And there's probably something happening under the hood there. Um, I guess maybe Obama knows Joe Biden's not going to win. And he doesn't want to shoot his shot yet. I don't know. But that's super weird. Do you think the millennials, when you say, well, millennials, and they want all this free stuff, do you think that's the only thing from your research and stuff, that's the only thing that's drawing them to Bernie? He doesn't demonstrate any qualities of leadership that kids want to emulate. Well, I think I think here's the re here's the reality. In 1968, minimum wage was a dollar twenty-five. Gold was like thirty-six, thirty-seven dollars an ounce. So if you index that gold and minimum wage, I got the chart in the book. In today's money, that's one hundred and three thousand U.S. in purchasing power. Wow. So people today have lost ninety percent of their purchasing power. So even if you're a smart guy, even if you have a degree. Even if you're working two jobs, you can't make it. Like in New York here, like how does a guy live? I'm, I'm ordering Uber Eats. It was 110 bucks yesterday. I was like, God damn, man, 110 bucks. Now I'm rich. But if, if I wasn't rich, you're rich, yeah, if I was a normal, great leader, you're I, I can handle it. You know, I can handle 110 bucks. What's rich bucks. in Canada, but no, you we know, can, I mean, we can yeah. talk. But if I, if I was a normal guy, if I was a normal guy like making 40 grand, I'd be dead paying 110 bucks right. for an Uber Eats. You can't even afford to live in New York for 40 well, You'd have 40 to move grand. to like Ohio or something. You That's know? probably possible. Are you going to spend a little more time down here in the U.S.? Or? Oh, I, I love it. I'm supposed to go to L.A. next week. And yeah, it's Keep great. Keep us posted on, uh, on things going on with the book and uh, join us again, please. Thank, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. That's uh, Stefan Arnio, and uh, he's the author of Hard Times Create Strong Men. Go out, check it out, uh, and we're going to have you check out some more Liquid Lunch right after this.